think it is a bit of a set uh, signal that we had in 2021. Sorry, yeah, like that is okay, perfect. Then. So the, as, uh, as shown by Philippe earlier, the, the number of cholera deaths really shoot it up last year, as did uh, case fatality rate. The, so last year we've seen large uh, outbreaks. So and, uh, unfortunately, the, the deaths they follow the, the cases. And uh, I think the most that can be done to prevent cholera deaths is to prevent cholera in the first place. Then. But to be able to reduce uh, cholera mortality once we have cholera, <laughs> so that, that's the objective of our working group. The, what we launched in 2021 was a, a review of uh, cholera mortality, looking at the risk factors for, for mortality. The, you might think that we know everything about treatment of cholera, today, but in fact, uh, what we know today is exactly the same what we knew 50 years ago, and we have not changed or looked back at what we are doing at all, which, uh, at least for me, coming from the field of other uh, infectious diseases, was a bit uh, <laughs> quite hard to see as well. The, in fact, we are treating patients in the very same way as we did uh, 40, 50 years ago, without looking who is who, and uh, who are people that are dying today, of course. And, uh, so that's why we launched this uh, review that uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, it brought uh, quite some interesting uh, results, some expected and some not so expected, I guess. The, uh, the first thing that we found was that actually we really don't know much. The quality of data available, so what we reviewed as a published uh, literature, where we found out that basically the, the quality of data is so poor that it's basically impossible to conclude much. And uh, a number of studies that uh, looked at, and these are very, very basic uh, studies in the first place, looking at the you know, descriptive uh, descriptions of cholera outbreaks. But even these basic uh, reviews, they don't describe cholera deaths. So many of these uh, you know, uh, descriptions of cholera outbreaks, they don't describe who is dying, not even by age and sex which makes it very, very difficult to, to, to understand and uh, you know, to, to, to improve what we are doing because we actually don't know what we have in front of us. The, from what we could find out is the, where those basic things were available, we could see that, in fact, uh, uh, the, the case fatality ratio is much higher in elderly, which is not such a big surprise, but it hasn't been clearly stated uh, before. So the, again, the, the thresholds of age groups aren't very well defined who is elderly or who is not. But uh, however the studies defined it, they mostly found that people older than 50 or older than 60 or 65, they are more likely to die if they get cholera. There. Another finding that was a bit more surprising is that the men are also more likely to die. And this was also quite, again, <laughs> poor quality of data, but quite consistent through the, through the studies without a very clear explanation why that would be so. And another big funding that, again, it's not a big surprise, but even in these studies that mostly look at the, 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 so the, the line list of patient data, so patients that somehow reach to the, towards the health system, about half of the deaths, depending on the study, occurred before they reach health facilities. Eh? So we have really two big uh, tasks in front of us. One is to, to provide case management treatment to the early access to treatment in the community or yes, as soon as possible. And the other one is to improve the, the care for the patients that are reaching our structures. So to differentiate care, so to, to, to know who is more at risk of dying and uh, address those patients in a different way. And so that's where the focus of our work is. So I think this work, the, the review is giving us a kind of a path forward uh, to work on these two pathways, one on the community care, so improving access to care in the communities, so early access to treatment, and on the other hand, uh, to, to improve the case management for, for complicated cases of elderly patients, uh, patients with comorbidities, and other high-risk groups. Okay. Um, so can I ask a second question then? You didn't mention the role of antibiotics in particular, and so I was wondering if you could comment on that in the treatment and prevention of cholera, and whether it's been a key issue in the past, and what is the current thinking of the working group when it comes to antibiotics? And the second question. <laughs> 
So that's, of course, also on our agenda, because then it's been, uh, it's the only, <laughs> in addition to the rehydration, that's the one thing that we have on our recommendations today. The, but we have been reviewing since, I mean, reviewing, discussing, is the, so the current GTFCC recommendations, they recommend treatment of uh, severely dehydrated patients with antibiotics, and those uh, that are uh, at high risk of dying, which today are the severely malnourished children or pregnant women because of the risk of the fetal death. Uh, so already with the work on the review, we can clearly say that another group clearly at high risk of dying are elderly patients. And so that's the already, I think, the first recommendation that we can very safely uh, uh, give uh, in terms of adapting the, the recommendations to the antibiotic use. Then there's been a lot of discussions in the past years in the case management working group on the preventive use of antibiotics. So the, as part of, I think, the maybe colleagues from the surveillance working group will work in, for example, as part of CATI strategies on you know, the how to uh, uh, try to use antibiotics preventively at the most people at the very highest risk. The way we are looking at it as well is to try to, before going straight to the purely preventive use, we might also think uh, how will the expanded use of antibiotics for the cases uh, improve the, or reduce the transmission, right? So that we do know that pe and cholera is transmitted by people who have cholera, and people who take antibiotics uh, have reduced risk of transmission because the, the, the duration of transmission is shorter. No? The, so we are where the colleagues in, from University of Utah are working on the a modeling study looking how the expanded use of antibiotics for, for increasing the, the scope would uh, influence the transmission. The, and then we are working with other colleagues, uh, like from, uh, for example, Kati, because the, the other fear of antibiotic use is the resistance. Mm. So how we can make sure that uh, we, we follow the, if we are using antibiotics in a more, in a larger scale, how we are monitoring the resistance in, in parallel. Great. 